Welcome back to the channel, guys. I'm your host, Buck Nang, and today we're going to give you an update on the portfolio at the beginning of the week. And then we're going to talk about if Cisco, CSCO, the company, is a buy or not a buy because that is the position I am looking at uh, for possibly purchasing this Friday. And the reason I'm doing this on Tuesday, but you'll see this video Wednesday, is because I was hoping to maybe see if you guys who are dividend investing are looking at doing your due diligence um, and maybe looking into this company and let me know your thoughts on whether or not this company is a buy or not a buy. Uh, but for myself, I'll tell you why I am looking at this company and so on and so forth. But before we get into that, uh, if you're new to the channel, welcome. This is where we put $100 a week into a tax-free savings account to build a dividend portfolio right in front of your eyes. And if you're not new, welcome back. So we'll give you a quick update here, guys, on the portfolio. Today, we are closing out the portfolio at $5,507.38, up $28.66 on the day, up 0.52%. For the one week, we are, well, the graph is not loading, as always. There's always an error, always an error. There it is. We're up $4.57, up 0.08%. For the one month, we are up $161.97, up 3.03%. Uh, for the three months, we are up $341.24, up 6.61%. For the one year, we are up $937.38, up 20.51%, and the same for all. First position we have here is Bell Canada BCE, is the ticker symbol closing out at 61.35. Here is the snapshot of the position. This was our latest position we purchased last week. So I'll put a link in the video up there somewhere for you to check out. And again, that is BCE Inc. Ticker symbol BCE, also known as Bell Canada. Next position we have here is Bank of Montreal, ticker symbol BMO, closing out at 127.51, up a dollar one today, up 0.8%. Here is the snapshot of the position there. And again, that is Bank of Montreal, ticker symbol BMO. Next position we have here is Bank of Nova Scotia, ticker symbol BNS, closing out at $81.23. Or and we are up 39 cents on the day, up 0.48%. Here is the snapshot of the position there. And again, that is Bank of Nova Scotia, ticker symbol BNS. Next position we have here is Loblaws, ticker symbol L, closing out at $76.18, up 19 cents on the day up 0.25%. Here is the snapshot of the position. And again, that is Loblaws, ticker symbol L. Next position we have here is Manulife Financial Corporation, closing out at $24.71, ticker symbol MFC. And again, Manulife Financial Corporation, up 12 cents on the day. Here is the snapshot of the position there. So if you want to take a look at that position. And again, that is Manulife Financial Corporation, ticker symbol MFC. Next position we have here is Qualcomm, ticker symbol QCOM, closing out at $135.58, down a buck 73 or a dollar 73, down 1.26%. Here is the snapshot of the position here. And again, that is Qualcomm, ticker symbol QCOM. Next position we have here is Royal Bank of Canada, ticker symbol RY, closing out at $127.33 up 92 cents on the day, up 0.73%. Here is the snapshot of the position here. And again, that is Royal Bank of Canada, ticker symbol RY. Next position we have here is TELUS Corporation. And we purchased this position at the beginning of the month. Uh, so there is a video um, at the beginning of this month of June 2021. I will try and link this. I don't know how many videos I can link in this, but I will link it in a card up there. And again, this one is TELUS Corporation, ticker symbol T, closing out at $27.80, up $0.16 cents on the day, up 0.58%. Here is the snapshot of the position. And again, that is TELUS Corporation, ticker symbol T. Last position we have here is Toronto Dominion Bank, ticker symbol TD, closing out at $87.50, up $0.57 cents on the day, up 0.66%. And again, here is the snapshot of the position here. And again, that is Toronto Dominion Bank, ticker symbol TD. 
in the cash account, we have $106.19. I will show the proof right here that we put $100 every single week into a tax-free savings account to build a dividend portfolio right in front of your eyes. So stay tuned for that. So that is the portfolio there, guys. So we are going to talk about Cisco, uh, ticker symbol CSCO. I will uh, pull it up here because it has been on my watch list for quite some time. Today, it closed out at $53.79, down $0.38 cents on the day. This has a market cap of $228.28 billion. It has a price to earnings ratio, which is your PE ratio of 22.48. The 52 week high was 55.35, which we are coming close to, but the 52 week low is 35.28. Uh, it's currently traded on the NASDAQ and it pays a dividend of 2.68%. And you can see the volume of trades uh, for the day here, but the average volume is about 23 million. Um, this is categorized based off of well symbol trade in the electronics, internet, manufacturing, software, technology, and telecommunications, which is fair enough to say. Um, so a little company info, it is at the bottom there, so you can take a look and read on it. So I will leave it on this screen here, and let's talk about what I look for when I'm thinking of purchasing a company like Cisco or any company in general. And so my analysis when it comes to this sort of things, sort of thing is a analysis on the price to earnings, which is PE, which is the most common uh, thing talked about when it comes to companies. The market cap is not too big of a deal. The other things I want to look at is the revenue growth over the past like five years, the net income growth, which is very important, which is also on a five year basis because investments should be anywhere from five to 10 years or even longer or even forever. And then the other things I want to look at is shares outstanding because that is very important. It is sometimes the most overlooked thing. And, and there's a reason for that. And then I look at assets versus liabilities and then cash flow. Cash flow growth is the most important for me because it gives me an idea if the dividend will, if they can sustain this kind of company and then price to free cash flow. Anyways, so cash flow growth, that is whether they're able to pay the dividends, which we are looking for, and it's sustainable. Um, as you guys may recall, AT&T just cut their dividend. Was it sustainable? Probably not at such a high dividend. I know a lot of people talked about AT&T and they were never gonna cut their dividends and lo and behold, a merger happens and they cut their dividends. And so it's not a good thing to chase dividends, but it's also, but it's all, it's a good idea to look at, can they sustain their dividends? So currently with a two point, what was it? Two point, let's take a look. 2.68% dividend yield on Cisco. They pay about $6.12 billion worth of dividends to shareholders. That is a very important thing to me. I want a piece of that pie of that $6.12 billion. Okay. So the first thing is price to earnings ratio. Uh, right now, it sits at about 22.48 based on the screen here uh, on my phone. I like to be around that 20 or below. However, it I can overlook this one based on some other things. So profit margin is also another thing I look into. This is how much they make in, in their profits based on selling products, so on and so forth. That is the profit margin. And I know it doesn't show on well simple trade. However, if you look at other sources, the profit uh, margin is about a 20.92%. I always like to be about a 15% somewhere in there. So it is a good profit margin on that. And then the other thing is revenue growth. So revenue growth over the years. So there it is. So revenue growth over the five years is about 336 million. And that is there so very strong very very strong in my opinion very strong revenue growth the net income growth is about 220 million which is fantastic the other thing uh we want to look for is the where is it man i'm, I'm just maybe not prepared for this just kidding i am prepared is the cash flow which we go over here the shares outstanding which i was looking for they have, over the past time, they've been buying back shares, which is fantastic, in my opinion, uh, because it can be a silent killer. If you can imagine, you get a piece of the pie and there's 20 pieces of the pie 
and you buy a share, that's 20 pieces. And if the company buys back a piece of the pie, now there's only 19 pieces. So essentially your piece of the pie is now one of 19, not of one of 20, and which increases uh, value of your, your company stock, your ownership of the company, which is fantastic. When they're issuing shares to the public, more people are buying them. That means there's more more uh, shares in, in the market, which means your piece of the pie is much smaller. And so, which devalues the value of your stock, if that makes sense, okay? And then assets to liabilities, we're sitting at about 12.8 billion. So more assets, more than enough assets to pay off any kind of debts that they have and, and so on and so forth. So last year when they purchased, we purchased some stock, they purchased $8.11 billion of stock buybacks, which is fantastic. And it's great. It's, it's amazing, right? Uh, free cash flow. This is the amount of money that they have to pay out to dividend holder or to shareholders, which, uh, is a constant number here. So last year was about $14.8 billion in 2020. Okay. Which is great. And yeah, so free cash flow. 2019, we had a 15.07 billion dollars in free cash flow. The five-year average sits about 13.55 billion, which is awesome. So with that being said, the amount of dividends being paid out is 60, or sorry, not 60, 6.13 billion dollars, which shows that they have the ability to pay out the dividends and sustain their dividends, which is great which is great. Net income sits at about an average right now. The past three years, they're averaging maybe $12 billion. Uh, 2018, they lost 1.27 billion, which I'm going to overlook that one because it's such a small amount. But if you look over the past five years on their net income, you got an average of about 10 billion consistently since 2016, which is, which is great. Okay. And so I do look at that balance sheet looks great. Uh, income statements, the income on average on operating revenue, you're floating around that 50. A lot of it is in the $48 billion. Last year, they did $50 billion worth of operating revenue. Uh, 2019, 51 billion, 2018, 48 billion. And so I, you know, I, I glaze over this stuff cause I, I already looked into this company and it's been on my watch list for quite some time. And it meets a lot of the requirements that give me the confidence to invest in this company. And the reason I'm investing in this company is not because they pay a dividend is because they can sustain the dividend and they've proven that year over year over year. Now I'm not saying this company is a fast growing company, which it is absolutely not. It's kind of at the point where it's just sustaining and, and there might be some growth, but don't expect huge amounts of growth, like in other companies that are similar to Cisco systems to grow fairly quickly. It is a big boring company. I mean, the market cap is $228 billion. Like how much growth can you expect out of a company like this? This company was, I think at its max max price, which was in 2000 in the year 2000 sat around, what was it? $67 I can see here. And it sits at currently $54. Okay at a stock price last year come that's October or March of last year. If I can go back that far. Yeah. In, in March it was $37. So last year was about $37 at the stock price. But again, that, that was such a, a, a freak thing that happened. And, and if you got in that time, great, I would never ever sell this company to be honest, to be honest, I am going to buy this company. Um, and I'm buying it for the cash flow. I'm buying it for its future sustainability, for its future dividends, to be honest, because it's paying $6.12 billion. And I want a piece of that pie. And I think with the size of this company, I'm not saying it'll last forever, but this company, I, I do believe in this company. Um, and if you don't know what Cisco is, they do provide like IP addresses. They develop software. Uh, maybe your router is from Cisco systems as well. They do a lot of things and, and it's kind of worldwide as well. I think in the description on Wealth Symbol Trade, it does explain that like IP based networking, um, it operates in the United States, Canada, European markets, Eastern Europe, Latin America, the Middle East, Africa, Russia, Asian Pacific, and Japan. Uh, 
This company acquired another company, PassPath Inc., Pure Digital Technology, Pure Networks, and, and Title Software Inc. So they, they are a, a large, large company. And, and some people are more on the growth side and then want dividends as well. I'm just looking for a company that can sustain the dividends and prove that they can sustain the dividends, which is great. I mean, this company had a, a great uh, story on coming. I mean, in, in 1992 is 59 cents, right? And I don't know if there are splits in between that or whatever, but it, you know, it peaked at 70. I'm not saying it's going to go back to, to $70 at a stock price or 69 97, whatever it is close to 70 bucks. Um, but I, I believe in the company's sustainability. I mean, it, on average, the, the, the price over the past five years has, has been at an all time low of 30, 29 to, to 55 or 54 right now. And, and I think it can maintain that over the 10 years, it's, it's done great if you're looking at the graph, but the line really doesn't show anything until you look at the income statements, the balance sheets and so on and so forth. I mean, the, the revenue that this company generated is, is massive and, and the cost of goods that they've sold gross profit looks great. Uh, total operating expenses, you know, that is on average, the same amount pretty much every single year. And, and they're doing great. I, I really, I really like what I'm seeing in this company and, and I don't have a problem with that. They pay right now. It, so 37 cents per share that they pay. And, and I'm willing to pay for that 37 cents. They've increased it almost year that they've increased it like every single year. I mean, in 2012 from eight cents and then 2013, 17, 2014, 19, it has increased all the way from 2012 being eight cents all the way to 37 cents in 2021. And I think they'll continue to increase their dividends. I, it's not a fancy company. Like I said, it's a big boring company, which I love and, and it's great. And so yes, I will be purchasing Cisco, even though if people think that maybe this price is a bit high, I truly believe in this company. I believe they can continue to do what they do and it's not going to be fast growth, but I'm not looking for fast growth. I'm looking for slow, steady, sustainable keyword, sustainable growth. And, and I'm not looking to, to buy and sell. At, at a, in a short term, I'm looking to hold for the long term, excuse me, or even forever. And so for me, it is a buy. I don't know for you guys, do your due diligence, like I said, and is it a buy? Yes or no? For me, it's a yes. For you, it might be a no. And so that is my analysis on, on Cisco. And I, I truly like this company. As you know, it's been on my watch list. If you go in my past videos, you'll see it's on my watch list. But that's pretty much it, guys. So you'll see on Friday, I'll add this position. We'll do the regular updates and things like that. But hopefully you guys enjoy the rest of your week. I am going to get a haircut this weekend because it's getting quite long. Um, and I think I have a little mustache going on, so I might probably do a little shaving. But again, hopefully you guys did enjoy the video, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.